Right. Well, let's get started with um, episode 45 of the DFO Netcast. No video this this uh, episode because uh, I've lost the mains lead <laughs> to the video <laughs> camera. <laughs> and I can't record from the webcam. And I've got a highly expensive uh, Canon camera sitting here, image stabilizer, but I can't, I don't really have the time to get that set up. So, uh, But we're hoping that the video will be back next time. My name's Derek Watson, BDS. I'm the Chief Executive of Dental Fusion Organization. And I'm joined by our two regulars, Chris Ritchie, editor of Fusion Magazine, and Richard Lishman, MD of the Four Dentist Group. And today we're going to be talking, as usual, about the news. A um, bit about uh, a nice subcommittee that's got a big job to handle in terms of uh, future dental policy. And uh, perhaps a bit about the BDTA, which is getting closer and closer now. So, guys. Yes. Have you got the running order? Have you got the running list, uh, Richard? Um, I'll just open my emails, but I will have a second. If I drag it over to your... Um, your Skype. Do you think you can download it from there? Yeah, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> it, it's as likely as anything else, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's as likely yeah, as yeah. getting two USB yeah. sticks stuck up your bum. <laughs> Plus a CD backup. Yeah, can you imagine? What a what a terrible thing that I can't happen. imagine. This is why you're a novelist and we're not, because we can't imagine, no. Speaking of novelists, I went to a, a party yesterday, my publisher's 70th, and I met John Reader. Have you heard of him? He John, wrote the Missing yeah. Link book a few years ago and other things. He's this anthropologist chap, very interesting. Oh. Anyway, he, he was actually a real author, you know, he actually writes real books that people want to read. And it was, um, I was in awe of him, really. Very interesting fellow. One day, so many more books, uh, Chris. Yeah, I think we're up to about five now. So yeah, it's <laughs> going well. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Richard, no, how, how are you going to get this running order? Fun. Are you going to get it on your computer? Well, in fact, just if you just carry on, then I'll uh, I'll pick it up. Right. Okay. So, guys, uh, first up on the news, Mano Products Limited relaunched the Amano Tongue Cleanser. Originally sold 20 years ago by Dense Ply, based on a Roman design, and then uh, it achieved notable media interest and went on to be sold to in Harrods, it says in the press release. So um, the the reason why uh, I picked this up was not not because a, a tongue uh, cleanser is necessarily. I mean they've been <laughs> they've been around for the best part of two three thousand years probably on and off. But uh, they're trying to raise a hundred thousand pounds of capital for this using uh, a UK site called Cedars, which is the S W D R S, which is a crowdfunding site. Um, so, w what do we think? I mean, hundred. What's the American site that everybody uses to raise money? Kickstarter. Kickstarter. This is like a UK yeah. version of Kickstarter. Someone wants to kickstart. It's a sort of a combination of Kickstarter and. Uh, Dragon's Den, isn't it? Well, yeah. what, I'll, what I'll say, my first thoughts are, I'm sorry I don't have £100,000, so I'm out. Oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> you mean, you're sorry, comma, you don't have £100,000. <laughs> yes, yes, sorry, I should have put a comma in there. Yeah. I'm very sorry that I cannot help Mano Products Limited with this. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sure they'll get what they want. Uh, stylish steel tongue cleansers. What's so stylish about it? You, there's no dignified way. I mean, you're no, not going to walk... No, they've got spotty handles. Well, they've you're got not gonna, stripy you're not handles as well. You're not going to sit in a well. bar, are you? You're not going to sit in a bar holding one of these <laughs> things, cleaning your tongue and showing off to the ladies. You know, why, why does it have to be stylish? If, it's, if it cleans your tongue, it could look like anything, couldn't it? It doesn't have to have a spotty handle. It could look like a, a dog egg, and you'd still use it because it cleans tongue. Yeah. Well, I've got a, I've got an admission to make, which is that I, I have never ever cleaned my tongue, ever. <laughs> well, that this shows. This must I be think. over fifty years of dust and bugs on it. <laughs> not even with a toothbrush. <laughs> no, not even with a toothbrush. No, <laughs> no. Uh, it, it, uh, there are certain parts of the body which are not self-cleansing, 
but the tongue I've always thought was one of those low maintenance bits. And so yeah. th this guy, he wants uh, 100,000 pounds, and this is for a 20% share, yeah. valuing the company at a million pounds, right? Oh, <laughs> and this is to sell a bit of, this is to sell like a paperclip bent in half. <laughs> he's with raised a spotty with a spotty or a stripy handle. Now, he's raised uh, 22,000 pounds. These are really popular. They're really popular in India. Yeah. And um, I think you can buy them for a couple of quid. Yeah. Probably less really? than that, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't, I don't, don't think he's going to get his million oh, they pounds. they are stylish, though, you see. He says, we will well, seek to disrupt the $30 billion oral care market, where over 70% of this annual spend is on our teeth and very little is on our tongues. Despite the what? fact our tongues represent one-third of the surface area of our mouths. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. Yeah, all right, he can have the hundred grand. That's all. <laughs> now, now he said that. You see, he didn't say that before. That should have been his opening line. No, it's in his sales pitch. What? What's? What? What did he say? He wants to disrupt the oral care market. Disrupt the thirty billion dollar oral care market. Whew. Disrupt it. That, he probably just wants to uh, disrupt a billion or two. Would be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> Just knock it off the edge, you know, shake it off. But uh, no, I'm. I'm well, I, what about you, you Chris? You're out. I'm afraid I'm out. Richard? Yeah, I'm, I'm already out. I went out first. You're yeah. copying me. No, aren't no, you? no, no. Yeah, I've. I think it's. Uh, no, I, I have got a hundred thousand. I'm. I'm not investing in it because I just don't think. Twenty twenty percent of the company for a hundred thousand pounds. I think he's got to be joking. Hey, why yeah, don't we launch our own? Evaluation. Let's launch our own and call it a toothbrush and see what happens with that. <laughs> well, actually, you can buy toothbrushes with on the back of them. They've got like a, a, a D tongue fur or whatever they call them. Yeah. <laughs> so my, you can actually go out there and them. buy them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they, they already exist. They're, this chap, I wish him the best of luck in raising all that money. I reckon he just he's seen a car he likes or he's about to get evicted from his house or something and he's just decided a helicopter you mean well you know you you can buy cars for 100 grand just ask richard you know he's got loads hasn't he <laughs> you can. but actually i've just ordered one today <laughs> have you really <laughs> i have yeah what are you getting what are you re fact, you're replacing your old allegro are you <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> the orange allegro I've um, I've ordered a Mercedes CLS shooting brake. Wow! Oh, right. I'm actually, yeah, yeah, no, it's lovely. I've uh, I've that's the piece I'm going to be doing for the next uh, Fusion magazine as well. So I was doing the research on it, and it's that nice. I've gone out and bought one. How cool is that? Eh? That is pretty cool. It's an odd Someone, shape, isn't it? Someone's paying it is, too it much. Is. That big long window <laughs> at the side there, sort of the sort of teardrop window, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's nice. It's like a coupe estate sort of style. It's uh, it is an estate with style. So, and obviously, I've I've got a family the size of the Walton, so I need a decent sized car. Mm. Looks like an elephant sort of sat down on the back of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. Yeah, well, good for you, eh? So anyway, can we move on? I mean, that's quite a ridiculous story, isn't it? Some chap wants to make lots of money for himself creating something that isn't required by anybody well why don't you say what you mean <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's a great idea and i wish him all the best and i'm sure if he's listening to this he's wishing me all the best right now too okay news story number two the strange case of dentist omar addo erased after he brought the profession of dentistry into disrepute i don't know just want to know what the profession of dentistry has got to do with this because i I think of all the professions he was practicing, dentistry was probably the last one of them. But mm. uh, he, he met a, a woman at his dental surgery, I suppose, whom he later drove to his personal accommodation. The woman was an undercover journalist who secretly filmed the encounter. Actually, kudos to her for getting her secret filming working, because I can't. If I was an <laughs> undercover reporter, I'd never get any bloody stories, because I'd never be able to find the batteries on the mains leads. She, anyway. she probably had a spare cable. 
<laughs> but have, have, have you been for, for any strange trysts with Mr. Addo? Is that what you're saying? And you couldn't record it? I'm not sure what you're admitting to here, Derek. Me? Anyway. Nothing. None of my patients <laughs> yeah. ever asked me back to my place. <laughs> so, so what, what, what happened here? So she, she has gone to meet him and he's driven her back. And yeah, and says, uh, during that encounter, though he was not, he was not a doctor, registered with the G general medical council. Like they make it sound like, if he had been a doctor, registered with the general medical council, then then being driven driven back to his place to have a quick look at her breasts and abdomen and vagina and whatever would be would be okay, but because he wasn't registered with the GMC, obviously it wasn't. And then she then. Uh, uh, pop the question which she always intended to ask which was that uh, uh, she wanted to know whether he was pre prepared to perform a female circumcision on her two daughters um, so wh why did he have to look at her breasts then <laughs> I'm not sure how that comes into performing I should <laughs> imagine mate. she possibly felt that he'd be more inclined to say yes the more the more the closer they were let's put it that way <laughs> having said that she denies this she denies that they were intimate at all the two of them so um that that is denied but uh, it was widely reported um, yeah. and then anyway he he said yes to the circumcision and then um but it says in in respect to the um, intimate examination of the journalist uh, he acted unprofessionally and in such a manner as to bring the reputation of the profession of dentistry into distribute off the register. Yeah, well, I'm not sure this is a pretty odd story, isn't it? Um, why, why would you go to a dentist to get your daughters circumcised? That seems a bit weird. And why? why? It's, commu got, it's a community thing, know. isn't it? What are these two girls doing with penises? That's a bit worrying as well, isn't it? <laughs> There's nothing about this story adds up for me. I don't... I mean, apart from the fact he was a dentist, I don't think this is really a dental story, is it? Because he could have been doing anything. I mean, I know dentists do have second careers, some of them, and sidelines, and own chip shops and stuff. Um, because you can, you know, you can. You, you earn enough money as a dentist to have, like, a, other businesses. But... Um, yeah. I think um, he he could have been anything really. He could have been a librarian, or he could have been, a, you know, or, uh, could have worked in a kebab shop. Actually, probably a kebab shop would have been better. He, he probably he probably above his door it says teeth and foreskins. Come on in while you wait. That well, sort of thing. Anyway, that was a big story. That is a big story. Yeah. Yeah. What's next then? What's next? Now, now the next one is a bit sad. So. Richie, you better wind your neck in a bit for this one, because uh, a US dentist examined a boy for um, dental work, noticed he had a split lip, and um, looked in. <laughs> Someone flushed the toilet. No, that's a train it? going. Oh, past. that's a train going past. Oh, I'm, I I'm out were... train spotting at the moment. Sorry. Oh, I thought you were doing the sitting on the on the carsy. <laughs> you wind your <laughs> neck in, pal. <laughs> Anyway, he called the social services after he found this this boy had a split lip and some missing and loose teeth and scars on his arms. And the um, the agency tracked down his mother and the boy and met with them. And then she broke down and told them that her boyfriend had been, quasi-husband had been, been um, hitting this lad. And um, he had a deformed ear. And uh, but he still required plastic surgery, and the the father's now in jail on uh, seven hundred fifty thousand dollar bail. And apparently he split the lip oh. because he um, gave him a backhander, and his signet ring caught his lip or something. And this has been going on for a while. So I think there's there's two points I thought that arose out of this. One is that obviously the role of dentists in diagnosing abuse, you know, um, it's. It's um, best to err on the side of caution. Um, it's difficult because if you a mum does bring a child in and the, you know the child has got loose teeth and she says oh you fell over or something, it's 
it's a it's a difficult call because you know what do you do you'd like to ideally get the mother out of the room and talk to the child on its own and say how did this happen and then if he says oh my mother told me to say i fell in the swimming pool then you know it's all concocted um nine times out of ten it is genuine and we don't want to discourage people taking children to the dentist if they have fallen over genuinely you know um, as as the father of two young daughters i know what it's like to worry about them being taken into care every time you take them anywhere mm. you think oh my god you know and you genuinely do when you're where you're trying to look after children and, and they have bumps and scrapes and yeah. fortunately none of them broke anything but my god you know i mean if i'd had to have taken one of them into the hospital with a broken arm or something you there's always the doubt at the end back of your mind as to whether or not you're going to still have them when when they come out again you know you think oh they're going to keep them in and say well you're not looking after them very well yeah there's there's um there's a thick line there, though, isn't there? I mean, if this boy, he had clear, visible damage all over him. He, he was obvious, yes, by the sound yeah, of it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's just a shame that, uh, well, it's a positive thing that this dentist picked up on it straight away. I think uh, that's absolutely superb. He's doing a really good job, this particular uh, dentist. But when you've got other cases, such as de um, baby P, I think it's, it shows that there are shortcomings within the British system, at least. But yeah, yeah. Hat, hat off to this dentist in America. I, I think I think it's everyone's responsibility to look after everyone else, really. You know, children or not, if you see someone who is clearly the victim of something, then you you should do professionally or just humanly whatever you can to help. So yeah. I mean, everyone got so upset over Baby P, didn't they? And mm, yet, yeah, yeah. now there are, not weekly, but I mean, probably monthly, there are cases of, of similar. There's a case, isn't there, just included at the moment of a boy that died uh, at the hands of his, um, of his parents. I mean, we, you know, and at the time of Baby P, I used to say to people, this is very common. I don't know why everyone got so... I know, I mean, obviously, it's, it's, a, it's a tragedy, something like Baby P. But why do you think they got so... Everyone started wailing and gnashing their teeth over Baby P. And when we've had babies Q, R, S, T, U, V and W and been through the alphabet twice again, haven't we? That's and how the media spins yeah. it. It's always exactly. down to... Yeah down to how the media chooses to present the story and uh, ba baby p is the is the one that caught everyone's eye it's like the the uh, child abductions you know millie dowler and sarah payne they were the most high profile yeah. ones and there was the the girl was it in wales a couple of years ago and they they're not they're not isolated cases really you know these things do go on and especially in in europe as well we don't get to hear all sorts of, you know, very, well, it's rife over there, I think. And But it, you, you've just got, a, a, it, it's all about, you know, as a journalist, I know this, you butter things up, you want people to read them, you give them a, a certain spin. That's what you've got to do. Uh, but I, I don't think any case is any more important than any other. It certainly shouldn't be. Now, when, um, when someone comes in with a, with a loose tooth and a split lip, it's taken very seriously and someone's locked up but when someone comes in with holes in three or four or five teeth uh, from sweets pretty much the the uh, the teeth are extracted usually uh, the child has uh, problems later on in life with um, crooked teeth because the this timing and the spacing of the teeth is is mucked up because of the extractions um, where teeth can be filled, they're filled, and the parents are sort of packed off with a, you know, this. Did you know this has happened because of too much sugar? Which, of course, they damn well do know, and you probably have been told in the past, you know. And you have to really, really, quite badly neglect your children's teeth to get them to the point where they need to have multiple extractions. And yet, it's still common. It's still as common now uh, in 2013 as it was in 1981 when I qualified. So what do you, do you think, you know, because we're going to go into a package from um, PHAC, the NICE committee that's um, trying to decide about public health, dental public health and how to improve dental public health. And they're struggling because they don't really know 
um, what to do, you know, whether supervised toothbrushing is the idea, whether putting fluoride in milk is a good idea, um, whether giving away free toothpaste is a good idea. They really are stuck. And yet it seems to me that uh, prosecuting one or two really, really obvious, really, really gross cases of, uh, of where, where the child has neglected, whether the parent has neglected the child's oral health to the same extent as if they smack their teeth out, you know, um, would do more, I think, for public health of children in this country than, than any amount of free toothbrushes and free toothpaste. Do you think if parents were at the back of their mind thought that um, the rampant decay in preschool children was was can we can we change public opinion to the point now where it, it could be considered as neglect um what do you think that would do do you think that's reasonable now are we nearly there yet or or not i think, I think that would be a great idea because it is a form of abuse isn't it if, if your children have got holes uh, in the teeth at uh, young ages um, because kids don't know, you know, there's something that's sweet, they like it, they'll, they'll eat them. Um, but, um, yeah, unfortunately it comes down to the parents, not the child. Well, yeah, parents are already uh, responsible, aren't they? They're liable if they, their children aren't at school for whatever reason. Uh, I, I think it would be very, very difficult, though, to, to go anywhere near that because there's so much... Uh, uh, decay out there uh, you know and, and especially according to postcode as well you know there's there's geographical areas that have absolutely terrible oral health and you'd have to build all these new prisons to put all the parents in and I, don't, I can't see that happening well you wouldn't need to prosecute too many people would you you'd only need to prosecute a few high profile cases that were you know the worst of the worst, if you see what I mean. Yeah, but what what about parents who've got fat kids? You know, it's normally fat parents, <laughs> fat kids, and that's another thing, isn't it? Obesity is hugely, hugely dangerous uh, in terms of life expectancy. And when whenever I see uh, a chubby child walking around, I just can't help feeling sorry for them. And it's not their fault, is it? So it is the parents' fault. But no, no I you... think in principle, I think you're quite right. I don't see there is any difference. How the can only... you hold the parents to account, though? What can you do to them? Well, as you and said, that... that we already hold parents to account, don't we, in, in uh, areas such as truancy, even when, um, you know, they, they have to prove that they have done everything that they possibly can and, and uh, the failure is not uh, down to them. Um, whereas, uh, and you know, by applying that principle... You, again, you wouldn't need to prosecute the parents of every chubby child. I mean, perhaps they should uh, um, be, you know, have more to do with their doctor if the child is showing signs of, of being obese at an early age, certainly. But again, what you just need to do is prosecute one or two or three of the most obvious cases. I'm not just talking about chubby children. In fact, I'm not even talking about obese children. I'm talking about children who are who get into the newspapers because they're so fat. And, mm. and what we do is, it's, it's a fine line, isn't it, between at the one side saying, yes, uh, we're a nanny state and we're going to say how your child should be and we'll prosecute you if they're not like that. But on, on the other hand, it's not uh, correct either to say to the parents, y you can do what you like with your children. They're your children and your property to, you know, to that extent. And uh, if you want to bring them up with no teeth and, and totally fat, then... That as long as you don't hit them, then that's fine. It's not fine, is it? I mean, we have to we have to just slide move the sliding line up a bit, don't we? Towards the the, the slightly more intervention. I'd certainly be in favour of that for teeth, anyway. Mm. The thing is, you can see the the bigger children, can't you? It's a lot easier than than uh, checking if someone's got uh, got decaying teeth. Um, it's in your face, you know. When you walk down to the shops, you see. Um, you see larger children there. Um, maybe it should be the schools that uh, that have a relationship with the with the actual um, the the doctors or the um, I don't know the the government offices that uh, 
that would please this kind of thing. Yeah, well, but we, we also we also have this this social uh, aspect of it where you're not really allowed to criticise other parents, are you, publicly? And it, it would change the dynamics of everything if 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 there actually was some sort of legislation involved, then you would just get people walking around going, "Oi, your kid's fat." I'm shopping you. You know, you'd have citizens' arrests going on of parents, <laughs> parents who had their, their kids are bad teeth and stuff. It, it would it would escalate, I think. But yeah, something something has to be done about the the oral health problems of children. You know, and, and what what is being done? You know, you tell me. You're the dentist. Well, as a dentist, I, I it was certainly very obvious to me that there were some some children were be, being neglected because we did see it i mean obviously it was as obvious to us as it is to anyone else that a child is overweight if that child has got a neglected dentition but um you know the the, the phac committee um are grappling with this and that is the link or or, or the link that sort of the putative link between bad teeth and poverty or the link between bad teeth and bad housing because they know they can't examine everyone's teeth so what they're doing is they're saying what how can we decide where there is poor oral health and um, the best they can come up with is poor performance at school in the in areas where children are performing badly at school that there may be a link or they may be able to use that as a like a cipher for poor oral health and mm. um it just seemed to me that um we were encouraged to make too many excuses i'm going to be honest for the parents you know because they they were some of them were poor probably more of them were poor than rich um and some of them were, were pretty dumb um but some of them were pretty bright you know but they're perhaps slightly more dumb than bright but having said that it's not an excuse do you know what i mean if someone if you hit a child and knock two of its teeth out being poor and dumb is not going to help you in your defense and no. uh, giving a child sweets or allowing the grandparents to give the child sweets to the extent that they lose all or most of their baby teeth and have a lifetime of dental problems orthodontic problems as a result um uh, you know are we are, i just feel like we're perhaps um um i don't think we're, we're we're standing up for the children i think we need to stand up for them a bit more than what we are and we don't yeah, need to good. prosecute everybody as i say only take one or two we've only got to send out a signal that um you know if you're prepared to um leave the kids with the grandparents where the grandparents have got no teeth and we'll are, are feeding the child on nothing but mint imperials it will be noticed and it it will you know it will not be ignored um, it will be treated appropriately. Yeah. Well, let's do it then. Right. Yeah. Prosecute everyone. So, Eric, uh, write to the local MP and uh, we'll watch this space. <laughs> now, I'm going to go into the um, nice meeting video at this point. So, uh, has, have either of you seen it? Uh, no. Yeah, yeah, I watched your video, yeah. Just summarise it for Yeah, it. just summarise yeah. it. That's fine, yeah. It's a subcommittee of NICE. And NICE is, uh, the, the dentistry commissioning for public health in dentistry is being handed over to NICE. So NICE has asked this subcommittee to come up with a series of recommendations as how best to um, commission dentistry by local authorities to, to get the best uh, improvement in oral health. And they are, while the meetings are open to the public, they have taken a very sort of... Um, uh, how can I put it? An unhelpful line towards those of us who are trying to report what, what they're doing because they've banned, they've done their best to ban every form of reporting. So you're not allowed to uh, send emails or tweets or anything from the meeting. And in fact, you're not allowed to take in laptops or tablets or even mobile phones. No electronic devices are allowed. Yeah, you, um, you did mention this uh, last week actually, and it was uh, it sounds a bit unusual, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm, they're struggling with the question because they don't know what a disadvantaged group is. So, for example, is a disadvantaged group one whose oral health starts off poor as a group 
or are they a group that has trouble getting access to the dentist or they they can't really define them it they tend to be the groups that they're feeling sorry for at any one particular time so you know they'll say children are one group disadvantaged group and then they'll put prison uh, prisoners and uh, travelers and the elderly in another group without really having any rationale for doing that and then uh, they've also tried to analyse the evidence, which is basically of all the things which are done in dentistry, in particular those in dental public health, um, what works. And they've found that there's no evidence that anything works. There's very little evidence anyway. But of the evidence that they found, no, there's nothing which is um, adequate enough for them to be able to say to the local authorities, look, you guys, we've had a look at this and... Um, this is what you should do because we we've had an expert look so even the experts are baffled and it's hardly surprising because nice is a committee which was set up really to assess drugs they were set up to uh, as a third party to sort of deflect criticism of the government when people who were seriously ill knew that there was a drug available in america or or in the uk but it was unlicensed and wanted to know why the National Health Service wasn't providing the drug. And the answer was almost always because it costs hundreds of thousands of pounds a dose. And so NICE was set up to try and evaluate uh, in terms of what they call qualities, quality adjusted life years, whether or not, um, and they put a value on a quality adjusted life year in money. And then they, they look at the uh, cost of the treatment and then they work out whether a year's treatment is less or more than any extra year of life it might produce but when it comes to analyzing a discipline such as dentistry or treatment modality um, there's there isn't the data that there would be with a drug trial with at least with a drug there's lots and lots and lots of clinical data and all they have to do is look at it and say yes it's, it's effective or no it's not effective but how do you say whether you know dentistry is effective well what they're doing is well it, it's obvious here they are the wrong organization to be tackling this because their their model for the way they analyze things doesn't work here it's not a case that there simply is no evidence you look around you the evidence is everywhere you know their model does not apply to to working on this because it's they don't have the data that they need in that format so it's it's simply a case of the wrong people on the job. You know, you you can tell what a disadvantaged group is. You know, it's common sense. Yes. You can you can see it with your eyes. So they're sitting in a window with all the blinds. Sorry, they're sitting in a room with all the blinds drawn. That's that's the way they approach it, and they're never going to get anywhere with that approach. The the problem is the common sense doesn't come into this committee. Um, they, it, 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 it is excluded by by the rules literally insist that it is excluded uh, mm -hmm. what they're looking for is research they're looking for trials they hire a, a, a private company called Bayesian to do a review of the literature literally for anything that might you know that, that is scientifically proven in terms of dentistry um, and, the, and the, the trouble is that the stuff which is proven, so if, say for example there is a dentist who is a very good dentist, who's he's very popular with his patients, he's very, he motivates them, he's very good at getting their, improving their oral health, getting down their decay rates. Um, he will not have been the subject of a clinical trial. He will not appear in the literature. What he does, and this I think is is a th thread that sort of goes through the health service is that where the health service works well where you've got a hospital working well or, or an old primary care trust working well or even a ward working well or a department working well you you almost always find one person one charismatic well organized highly intelligent well respected popular leader at the top of that where you don't have someone like that they have to fall back on the rule book and following the rule book is a disaster as we know you know it's it's people cannot be led by a book and so much of the nhs is about leadership now leadership in dentistry is not in the literature you know you cannot analyze the literature and find the the charismatic 
individuals that can can bring about the sort of uh, change that's that's required and also other and things like treatment provision systems where you get the, the sort of treatment provision systems that produce the massive improvements in oral health like the the third party capitation where the patient pays a fixed fee based on risk and then if anything goes wrong past that point then it comes out of the dentist's pocket it doesn't come out of their pocket i'm talking about strict capitation here not the new sort of abortion which the everyone's doing now where you pay a monthly sum and and you still have to pay something towards the treatment strict capitation yeah but there's no where's the research for that you know has demplan is demplan putting forward have they carried out the clinical studies to show that third party capitation is as good as most dentists know it is and it all boils down to the the frustration because there are no dentists on this committee no nobody who's run a surgery or anything um and yet um what they say is going to dictate how the profession is shaped over the next 10 or 20 years and yet they're not really looking that they've not really gone to the people who know the answer because in a way they're they're avoiding the people you know they do not want dentists to come along because dentists they see as having a sort of a being self-interested having a vested interest in trying to get everybody to go to the dentist um, mm. and in fact that's the one thing they say is that improving oral health may not necessarily mean getting more people to go to the dentist they've got that old um aubrey shyam view from years ago that the, the biggest uh, the, the best way to um, improve people's oral health is to tell them to stay away from the dentist because that's where they have all the dentistry done <laughs> and this, well, that's no, a fair point this yeah. is a pervasive yeah. uh, uh, meme in academia well we've talked about this before haven't we that the, the problem is uh, all the people in charge of policy are talking to the the wrong people like the the government get all their information from jeremy hunt and that that is the um best example i think of the worst way you could possibly find out what's going on in dentistry because jeremy hunt is a a two-bit politician who gets you know shoved from pillar to post according to whatever variable happens to be around at the time and yeah, so nice are simply not the right guys. They might be very nice guys, but they're not the right guys to be doing this. But what can you do about it? There's not a thing you can do about it. Well, I think the government has shoved the job of uh, developing the system, the model, onto the third party because it does deflect a large amount of the criticism that they would otherwise get. Um, but it means that, um, you know, the old system whereby the BDA negotiated something with the Department of Health and what was arrived at was satisfactory to neither side but it was at least somewhere in the middle you know somewhere close to the mark um whereas now with nice i think we are going to see some extremely weird um, stuff going on because they they all they are trying to do is improve the oral health of five-year-olds that's really the only public health target they've got at the moment and there are severe concerns about uh whether or not the dental budget is going to survive in when it when it comes up because they've they, they've invented this thing called the quality which is the quality adjusted tooth year to try and compete with the quality quality adjusted life year so now we're saying oh as dentists we should be talking in quotties you know how many how much expenditure produces a quality and then of course some bright academic says well you know perhaps a front tooth might be more useful than a back tooth or or vice versa or but, you know, a tooth is less useful in an 80-year-old than it is in a 30-year-old. Or you might find that a back tooth is more useful when you're young, but less useful when you're old. And the, the, the fact of the matter is that there is no equivalence between quatties and qualies. <laughs> if, if there is not a billion quatties, doesn't make one quali. <laughs> so if you were trying to argue you know in a sort of the public health arena and you've got someone saying well we, we can you know by spending 6.5 million pounds we can get 65,000 qualies in cancer and someone else is saying yeah and alzheimer's we can do it and someone else is saying yeah i can get you 100,000 qualies in in uh, alzheimer's or something and you'd be sitting there as the dentist saying uh, well anyone want any qualies and the answer is no 
No, I've, got one's... A, I've got a box of them out the back. No one's going to be interested in them. They're worthless. We can't shift them. They're worthless, Chris. They've got mould on them now. <laughs> you might as well do what the DPP did with the old plaster casts and, and use them as a foundation for a car park. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, well, so anyway. that's it. Yeah, that's how we're, so we're doomed. We're doomed, as Mr. Fraser would say. We're all well, doomed. Some, there must be something that can be done about this. Uh, uh, you know, people say that the the BBA never stands up and does anything. Well, it did actually. It stood up and moaned about direct access after it had come to be. So, what the BBA could do, uh, uh, along with any uh, organisation, of course, Fusion could spear head this campaign is to get into government and say you're really cocking this all up could you let us have a go please because we actually know what's going on you know how's it how about that for an idea that's a get great it. idea Chris. it's a good idea but in practice if you if you were to go to the house of lords and get a appointment with um lord uh, earl, earl lord earl whatever his name is <laughs> Which you won't yeah. be able to because he's got about um, 600 portfolios of which dentistry is the least, in, you know, it comes alongside chlamydia in his list of importances. Um, and Does he have chlamydia? Uh, he's, he's got many, many things of which I think chlamydia is one. Okay. He's got everything. Don't cats have chlamydia? <laughs> he's, he's a hard-working guy, by which I mean he must sit down all day every day just signing stuff that's given to him by, by the senior civil service. But okay. it even assume that you went to him and said, look, Freddie, I've got, you know, this is all going badly wrong and we think we know how to fix it. He will, not, he will just say, look, this is all being done by uh, a chief dental officer who tells me he knows what he's doing. Uh, and he, in fact, has even delegated it to NICE. And NICE is a highly respected um, independent third party. Mm. And so I can't possibly interfere. You know, I think that's nonsense. I think if if every dentist in the land stormed into the House of Commons waving... It's not going to happen. It's as likely as bottles. walking into A&E with two USB sticks up your bum. It, it's not going to happen. <laughs> They've never done it. Well, never done it before. They never will. You say it's never going to happen, but well. And the other thing is that uh, they they have like a chain of um, what's the word? You know, when things go wrong, you can never find out whose fault it was in this country. Yeah, you know, we have yeah. this massive uh, culture, don't we? Where of no no fault, no blame culture. Where uh, usually what happens if you cock something up really badly is you end up getting a really really top job doing the same thing yeah. somewhere else. Yeah. Um, and the GDC does this. What they do is they, they give a massive decision to a tiny, tiny committee consisting of one or two people, two or three people, that, that can be easily swayed and influenced and told what's expected of them. And then they're told that if they, if they decide in the way that is required, that they, they themselves are not to worry because this is going to go up to another committee above them and then actually up to another committee above them. So, and at any stage it could be reversed or, you know, that their, recommend, their recommendation will not be the final recommendations. Oh, no, their recommendation is just the recommendation to the committee above. And then after that, it's, it's up to them. And then, of course, what happens is the committee above then looks at what's recommended and, and thinks, well... That is, that's the recommendation, and we know through uh, back channels that that's what's wanted. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll over the top of the tiny rubber stamp, we'll put our medium-sized rubber stamp. And so, of course, the rubber stamps get bigger and bigger and bigger as it goes further and further up until eventually the main committee rubber stamps it and, and, but really has had nothing. And in each case, they say, well... We we don't really need to think about this because we've delegated this to a subcommittee. The subcommittee will have done all the research and the proper thinking on this. So what we can just stick our, our bigger rubber stamp on it and pass it on up the line. And that's what's going to happen with NICE. This um, Department of Health or local authorities will implement these recommendations. They will be given to them by NICE and they will be given to NICE by this subcommittee, PHACB. And PHACB makes a big point at the beginning of every meeting of stating that we are merely an advisory body. Our views do not rec represent the views of NICE. 
and yet when of course they send their views up that they, they will be rubber stamped and they will of course because nice is not going to second guess what phac is doing they're not going to turn around and say okay you guys have spent six months done six meetings spent thousands of pounds on research and we're, we're just going to uh you know with, with someone in the public gallery here who's been a bit rude about you so we're just going to let him have a go <laughs> so these things are like a snowball you know they gain a momentum of their own and in the end uh the daftest recommendations i think based on absolutely nothing are going to end up as uh, the the uh, policy that's going to be given to local authorities on and what on which they're going to base uh millions of pounds of um public spending and what's it based on? Nothing. Nothing, I tell you. Nothing. What, just like HTM0105 then? And yeah, no evidence base. And um, <laughs> all those religious texts that people follow. See, earlier on you said that no one actually ever follows a book, but tell that to the millions of people who do. So, <sighs> come on, move on. What's next? Well, that's about it, really, apart from um, the uh, BDTA. Yeah, we were. Um, I mean, I think there's one more podcast, isn't there? Between oh, I just wanted to say a quick hello to everybody who's um, cycling from Baal to Crawley or Basel to Crawley, Basel, um, including my brother who's a keen cyclist, and uh, they're all doing it in aid of charity. It's 600 miles. They've raised over seven thousand pounds so far. It's all organised by Stroud, and, and uh, it's going to the Cleft Lip and Pallet Association and Bridge to Aid. So they're going Fantastic. back to Crawley tomorrow, which is the twenty fourth. So no doubt they'll be um, they'll be uh, having a nice warm bath, <laughs> resting yeah. there. Resting I'm there. talking about the bridge to aid. That's uh, they're having a ball, aren't they? On the um, is it the Saturday evening? No, sorry, the Friday evening of the BDTA. Is it the eighteenth? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that should be a good fun. Are you go? Are you guys going? Uh, no, I won't be there this year. Well, I'm going, but I'm not going to the ball. I tend not to go to the ball. It's only thirty pounds. I'm a bit antisocial. Dig deep. <laughs> Put it through your expenses, like everything else, Derek. I don't have, no, 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 no. I can't spend <laughs> members' money on going to balls. <laughs> they would, you know, this is not the, this is not the purpose for which this money is given. Well, you spent a lot of the company's money on balls, though, haven't you? <laughs> We've spent some on advertising in dental practice. <laughs> it's about the same thing, isn't it? <laughs> I suppose so. So, uh, yeah. Now, we're going no, to be at the no, BDTA, 17th to the 19th of October. It's at the NEC. You don't go to Excel. Uh, we're on R10J, which is the association stand. So R10 is like a big, it'll be a big like a carousel. And J is our little cubicle, our cubicle. But there's one. There's going to be. We're going to be doing a netcast on the 14th, assuming that uh, we can get it organised. And that one, I'm hoping we will have video for because, um, or we'll have video for the whole thing because I'll see if I can find a mains lead. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> I don't know where it is. Actually, it's it's like, you know, they say a needle in a haystack. This is a piece of hay in a haystack because I am surrounded here by black cables. I'm like it's like that scene in Indiana Jones, you know the one where he falls through into the cavern and there's snakes all over the place. Yeah. It's writhing around all over the floor when he's with the woman in the wedding dress. And uh it's exactly like that here. I'm sitting here in the dark, surrounded by cables, cables going everywhere. It's like Jodrell Bank. So the um fusion fusion came out, so uh, you we welcome uh, content for the next issue of Fusion. And uh, if you're not a member of the association, you can get a, an abridged digital version by going to the website, uh, which of course is dentalfusion.org and um, and downloading it. There's a link there to Dental Fusion magazine with a download link. Or, Chris, this is your baby. You can download the Fusion app. Yes. For yeah. iOS and Android, whether you're on version seven or version six of ios whatever it is i haven't upgraded yet have you upgraded to the new ios yeah it's no. good actually I don't a bit, know. Uh, the icons look a bit old-fashioned but yeah it's it's pretty good oh right well i might give it a go then because i've not done it because i'm i'm a bit worried that well i'm not an early adopter in terms of um 
operating systems. I always like to get other people to sort out all the bugs and the crashes and everything first. What, what yeah, exactly? No, what, what exactly is iOS seven? What's the change? What does it do? I've not figured that out. <laughs> well, what was just the point of it? What was the yeah. point of it? It's a, just a change just, of style, isn't it? It's got it's flat icons of instead of the three D icons. Yeah, it's just all about moving forward, Chris. You know, there are some yeah. usability um, improvements. Um, I think yeah. they have sort of tried to nick a few things from Android, such as the ability to sort of swipe up and or swipe sideways and get some get information quickly. Yeah, that's one thing I did notice that uh, that if you want to. Um, close down any of the individual applications that are open to uh, to make sure that your battery of the iPhones lasts more than 10 minutes that you need to where you used to double click on the, the bottom uh, button and then um, keep your thumb or finger over the particular icons on the bottom of the screen until you had a little X next to it and then you used to press them and delete them now what you do is you swipe up to discard them so there's yeah. a tip for you Okay, see, I switched from iPhone. I, I found the iPhone very uncomfortable to use as a phone. It was great for everything else. Um, and so I've that gone to Android. Your, that was probably your spiky case you had on it. No, you need, you need some Sennheiser um, earbuds with a microphone on them. Yeah, well, the, the Android phone, I've got the HTC One now, and it's absolutely brilliant. Fantastic phone. It's a bit of a, a geeky phone. phone, isn't it, that one, Chris? Well, maybe I don't know. If if that's what you want to think of me, that's fine. I'll be... That's a compliment. Oh, is it? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's you. a compliment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it is. It is. It's a lot. It's a lot more um, intuitive. I found than the iPhone. Although the iPhone is all this icon-based stuff, there's occasionally you run into something and you wonder, oh, how do I do that? And what the HTC has is this pull-down menu at the top, and you can just do everything from there. Very intuitive, very easy to do, and it's got 32 gigabytes onboard storage from the off. It's a very nice phone. Anyway, we're not here to talk about phones, are we? Well, it doesn't matter because no one will be listening now. <laughs> Good. All because right. no, no. Seriously, as soon as I say right, well, um, you can get more information from dentalfusion.org. Everyone just that's it. They'll just fast forward. <laughs> okay. You never, you never listen to the closing titles, do you, on a podcast? Always fast forward. The the five yeah. S is um, has been launched, so that's uh, that's quite good by the looks of things. Yeah, and oh. I found I found out the other day that you know the five C, which they've launched as well. Apparently, mm. it's the same as the five, but with funkier colours. <laughs> that's the yeah. only difference. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's it. it. Yeah, C stands <laughs> for colours, obviously, or yeah, exactly, or, or something, something else. else. Yeah, of course, <laughs> the same. <laughs> But uh, uh, I'm going to get the new iPad when that comes out because I've had this iPad 2 for ages now and it's there's steam coming out of it every time I use it now. So the iPad 5 will be mine. Mm, yummy. Is it iPad 5? Is that what they're coming up to next? Yeah. Yeah. God. Things move on, don't they? Well, I'm going I, the I other way. I'm, I'm Android through and through me. I'm too Googlified to uh, to. The the reason why I bought an iPhone, well, I mean, I'm given an iPhone, um, but that was because when I w always wanted an Android phone, but around about the time of the iPhone 3, there wasn't an Android phone that that approached it in terms of functionality. So I think around about the iPhone 3 t point, you know, it was the obvious choice. But then, but now, um, uh, since the sort of the Galaxy. 3 and the Galaxy 4 came out and HTC one's definitely very very advanced in terms of hardware but 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 you know not cheap um, but I'm looking at the LG Nexus 5 I think as a, perhaps the next phone and I'm going to stick with my Galaxy Nexus uh, the, the Google um, Nexus um, 7 tablet which I've got the old one not the new one but the old one's still working fine I love how you stubbornly um, use shit equipment just to prove yourself right. That's brilliant. No, 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 no. no. Android no longer shit. No, Android, no, Android good. 
No, the iPad is the king. It is the absolute king of tablets. No, 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 no. It is. iPad, it is. good. If you want to uh, work out, you know, improve your upper body strength, iPad, definitely recommend it. <laughs> but uh, for, for just for generally lying uh, in an armchair with a screen on your uh, stomach watching TV or, l or in bed with a, something on the bedside table catching up on YouTube... Definitely, you don't want anything bigger than a, a a noodle. Google Nexus. How do you catch up on YouTube? Do you sit there and watch like several hundred thousand videos a day? Or <laughs> well, yeah, I do. Yeah, don't watch much telly now. What you Just do? You subscribe. No, you subscribe to channels, right? Yeah. And then every time someone posts anything new on that on that particular channel, you're notified. It comes up under subscriptions. So every day you just click on subscriptions and it just presents you with whatever's new. In fact, the yeah. biggest problem, I'm subscribed to about 30 or 40 channels, and um, but the problem is that they're not producing stuff fast enough for me to watch it. Because if you think about it, when you watch TV, you can watch four or five hours a day easily. And um, um, there's not... Uh, you know the, the private stuff the homegrown stuff on youtube although the quality is very good and it is precisely what i want to see because it's very very well tailored to niche the niche sort of interest that everyone has um although you might think that subscribing to 30 or 40 channels would give you enough to watch but um there aren't mm -hmm. you know, no you know. no i agree i find i don't w really watch normal tv can't be bothered with it well, perhaps we'll have to do a technology um, netcast, technology, and, yeah. and talk to dentists about what they use in terms of technology and how how it helps. You know, F share the yeah. share the love, share the knowledge. Yeah, you might learn a thing or two, Richard. Yeah, it's unlikely, <laughs> but yeah, mate. <laughs> yes. Well, this has been a, a lovely pleasure, chaps. But I'm hungry, and I'm going to have some lunch. Okay, lovely. Yeah, I think I'm going to join you. I don't mean actually get in my car and drive to your home, Chris, but I'm going to have lunch as well. Is that time well, of day for me too? You would be most welcome to join me here for lunch. So, yeah. Well, thanks. Maybe next time I'll uh, hold you to that. I'll be there for me baked beans on toast. <laughs> yeah, Derek <laughs> visited me a couple of times. What yeah, was the lunch like, Derek? Is it worth me uh, journeying Well, I didn't get there? baked beans on toast. No, I didn't feed him. The thing is, he kept sticking his tongue out. It had all these bits on it. <laughs> I, I assumed he'd eaten. He didn't have bits of food on it. No, the bits of something. It's fluffy. You want one of them tongue scrapers, do it? <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to reach for my credit card right now. They're very that stylish. Probably, well, they're cheaper and probably do the same job. You should rub your credit card up and down it. <laughs> 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 No, no, <laughs> please. All right, guys, look, I'm going. All so, right, cheers, All right, take care. See you soon. Yeah, catch up soon. Bye. 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 Bye.